Hey there, folks. So tonight I got a pretty special treat here. Um, you may remember a reasonable while ago when uh, Extreme Rate reached out and asked me to take a look at their um, unique Game Boy shells, and I was I was happy to oblige. Um, I did have a few problems with this thing, but they said they took my feedback, and then I kind of never heard back from them until last few days when they reached out again and said, hey, we have some new shells. We'd like you to take a look. So I did, and I'm very, very pleased that they actually took my feedback instead of just dismissing me as a um, grumpy person. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can think of more descriptive words that are less... Um, content friendly. Anyway, I'm glad they, they took, took that feedback um, and made new shells because I've got here today one of their brand new IPS ready Game Boy Color shells. So as far as I can tell, these are the only IPS ready Game Boy Color shells you can get right now. Uh, and here is what you get in the package. They're a little bit pricier than other shells, but you do get a little bit more and You get You get that cool finish from Extreme Ray. I I went with the gold the first time because I don't know I thought it would be so like I thought it would be so bad that it's good like it just transcends the scale um, But I wanted to try something a little bit different this time. So I checked out their uh, chameleon shell and the first thing you'll notice as you pull it out of the bag is that a little bit falls out so they include a link port cover in a matching finish and I, I don't know I, I think that's pretty neat no no other Game Boy Color shell comes with these but uh, the shell itself crack it open notice a few things um, First, that we have this different than stock cutout. Um, I don't have a stock shell handy at my desk to compare. Well, I mean, I kind of do, but it's been carved up for something. Um, but anyway, we have a cutout, and we have these little tabs down here that we'll have to get broken off so that we can fit the bigger screen, or you can leave the tabs in and use it to center your OEM screen. Uh, but first thing, notice this is a custom mold. You see yeah, they have their branding on the uh, inside their EXR Project Revitro. Re Revitro? I don't know. R-E-V-I-V-T-R-O. And then down here we have a model number CGB V1. You know what they say, always wait for V2. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, it, it does genuinely look good, uh, and so far, I have already opened this up and, and started, uh, getting a feel for it. I didn't put it together yet, but I did inspect it. My complaints on the initial shell was that the finish was uneven, and, like, it just straight up, you could see spots where there was a gap. Now, this one, yeah, it's not fully finished under the lens, but it's finished on all the edges there so the the lens should cover that nicely also the base material is black instead of white I don't know if that's just particular to this color finish uh, as opposed to gold because I didn't get the same one this time around um, I do also have their Game Boy Advance shell and I did get that in gold so we'll take a look at that later too but I think the black looks so much better than the white underneath because if you actually use this thing this coating will come off. It's just a matter of time. Plastic can only be so durable. It will come off. Scratching and showing black through underneath is going to be so much better than showing white through because this is already such a dark color. Uh, but, you know what? I think that's enough about the shell. Um, nothing too complicated. Notice there is uh, something missing from the front, but if you couldn't tell what it was, I'm not going to point it out. I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks even better the way it is, but anyway. On the back, 
I mean, it looks pretty much like a Game Boy Color because, spoiler alert, it is. Uh, we have the text all over for the uh, DC input and headphones. Unfortunately, the text does look a little sloppy because of the uh, finish there. Um, but it is much better than some of the other shells that I have taken a look at in the past. Um, I will say this, at least the text is on straight and there aren't any chips on the edges. That I've noticed so far. Yeah, there's no chips on the edges. So, you know, take some, you win some. Win some, you lose some. But anyway, the text does genuinely look pretty good. Uh, it could be better, but not while they're still painting this coating on. Um, I wonder, I suspect they're like, they're soft touch shells. The text might look a little bit better on those, but I mean, you, you buy something with this kind of finish. I don't think that the attention to detail, like the text, I don't think that makes that big of a difference. I mean, this thing is far from subtle. <laughs> And that's not a bad thing. Anyway, carry on, getting distracted. Let's see what else we get in the box. We get a warranty card. Apparently you have to register it to get their warranty or you have to review it or what was it? Share a photo for a product on your social media and at extreme rate. I'm gonna not do that. I mean, it's on my YouTube channel now, so can't really avoid that, but I, I'm, I'm not going to add them. You get a baggie full of screws, you know, so you can screw it together. You get membranes. Uh, these are brand new custom made membranes specific for this shell. Uh, they're in this clear material, which doesn't make any difference whatsoever because you won't see these unless you put them in a different uh, clear shell. Uh, and if you have like one of Natalie's new LED kits, I mean that could be pretty cool with these, but it's kind of kind of be going to be a moot point because it comes with these special start and select membranes, and I'll get more into that in just a moment. Um, it comes with some tools for actually assembling your Game Boy. It looks like you get one of those cheap Y screwdrivers and then a cheap Phillips bit and a cheap pry tool. Um, don't get me wrong, it's nice that they include these for people who don't have them, but yeah, I got, I got tools already. Um, you get the metal bits, the cart shielding, and the um, battery terminal. We get a glass lens. This is OEM sized. Uh, which means it should fit this kit, which is convenient because I don't have a lens for this. Um, but it will not fit the newer Q5 backlight kits, unfortunately. I think if I had to find one thing to complain about, I think that is, that's going to be it. If you want to put a Q5 in this thing, it's going to take quite a bit of cutting. Um, I guess in all fairness though, there aren't any Q5 shells out as of this moment, except for maybe boxy pixels. Uh, I, I don't know if that is Q5 compatible. I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but aside from that, you can't get a plastic shell that is Q5 compatible. You got to start cutting. Um, so it's not really that big of a downside at the moment. Uh, and then you get the adhesive for the screen that is right there. And you get your very own custom extreme rate product code sticker. Um, you may, do, may notice that they did their own thing here too. They popped their own logos on it. Extreme Rate, Project Revi Revivtro. I, if there's a way to say that, I need help. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I do think it's a little bit weird that the dates on this sticker are 2010, since this came out this year, 2021. But I don't know, maybe they started working on this sticker 11 years ago and just never got it printed. Or maybe they did print it and they've been printing them for 11 years and I just haven't been paying attention. Who knows? Either way, the printing on it is, it's better than most of the generic aftermarket stickers. So I'm fine with that. Uh, but know what you're getting into. If you want it to look OEM, then, well, maybe you shouldn't have bought something with this finish. But 
also keep in mind that the sticker won't either. And last but not least, the buttons. Now, you might be looking at this going, gee, that's a lot of plastic in there. There's, there's something kind of weird going on in there. Well, yes, my friends, there is. Because you get a D-pad, A, B, power, IR, start and select. So normally on a Game Boy Color, you have your silicone membrane start and select buttons. On the new extreme rate shells, they're giving you plastic buttons with uh, these custom membranes to actuate it, which is actually really cool because it means you can get colored start and select buttons quite a bit easier and cheaper than uh, going through uh, like retro modding. Uh, it also means that color matching with your A and B and D-pad to your start and select is going to be significantly easier, assuming they have the color that you want, which, you know, they, they don't have all the colors. I think they only have like five right now, but maybe they'll have more in the future. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what the normal membrane looks like, except normally not this color. And then here is their membrane. And I'll just keep that out so we can test it just in case. Uh, one last thing, this is the IR window that it comes with. And this is actually really novel because this is the first time I've seen an aftermarket shell do this. But if I take my light over here, put it under there, you notice, look at that. That's a transparent material. That means we should have working IR when I install that window as opposed to uh, one of these things that normally come with these shells, uh, aftermarket shells, not extreme rate, which is not transparent at all. So, kudos. I am, I, I'm very pleased with this so far. I haven't even put the darn thing together. I've just basically nulled it out on my desk and yeah. Anyway, here is Tonight's very special donor. It's nothing special. It is a Game Boy Color that I've had sitting on my desk, but the key factor is that it works perfectly fine. I hope. I haven't tested the button inputs, but that doesn't really matter because that's not what this video is about. But it probably works. Um, but most importantly, it's IPS ready, so I can just drop this in. Bingo, bango, bongo. This is actually from, if you couldn't tell from the carved out shell, a um, an attempt at the very first backlight mod from uh, Mr. Ben Ven here. I actually just got done uninstalling the ribbon cable on this thing. There was no screen, it was just a ribbon cable, so it's not like, not like I'm committing some weird sin, but just got done installing it, returning it to stock so that we can use it for this video. Okay, I don't need any of this stuff. So this should actually be a relatively quick install. Uh, now this kit in particular, it might not line up properly with the screen cutout. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I did a video relatively recently, well I think at this point it's been like six months, but I did a video where I purchased an absurdly overpriced backlight kit from my favorite vendor and uh, compared it with the cheapest backlight kit on the market, which turned out to be the exact same. Um, but uh, there is a slight, slight difference in the software on them. Uh, the image position on the screen itself is slightly different between the two. That's literally the only difference I could find. I'm going to grab another LCD because this one is gross, or maybe I'll just take a few minutes to clean it. I will be right back. I get a lot of comments on stuff like this in after my videos, um, I do actually have a video on the proper way to clean LCD screens, 
specifically these ones because I see a lot of people mess this up. Um, anyway, I get a lot of comments on this. People will point out to me that I left the protective film on the screen when I'm doing a, a, a backlight kit install in a video and despite how it may appear, especially if you're looking down at the uh, time, I am rushing through these installs. Um, and one of the corners that I cut usually is getting the screen sealed in properly. Now, I do that because I'm trying to do the whole thing on video and you know, it's, it's, it's already hard enough to do a screen install. Um, next, once the camera's going, it just becomes exponentially harder because for some reason, uh, humans in the vicinity of a recording camera lose, I don't know, like five intelligence and y you lose the ability to articulate your thoughts. Um, you forget simple stuff like basic arithmetic. Uh, you forget how hands work. Stuff like that. It's um, it's frustrating. So, to compensate for that, I just leave the damn film on, drop it in, and then after the video I take the 20 minutes to pull it out, clean it up with some uh, canned air, and, you know, seal it in proper so that no dust gets in. There are also instances where I have one Game Boy and then like three backlight kits I need to do content with. So I just don't install it permanently. Trust me, I I know I know that the, the film is still there. I just Priorities. Anyway. This is not coming out as good as I had hoped but it is significantly better. So, let's go with it. So this will go in, something like that, but we will need to remove this tab and this tab. It looks like there should have been three tabs, but one of them was already uh, broken off. But it's okay. They come off easily and they need to go away anyhow. That goes in like that. Ta-da. Easy peasy. All right, where is my lens? Here it is. It was under the motherboard. In this particular case, I am gonna be sticking it down. So easy way to do this. They usually have this um, cutout along one of the edges. That matches up with the cutout in the uh, screen. I don't know why they do it, but here we are. Uh, you can also see with this one in particular, the white edge goes down and the brown edge goes up because you can see it is not centered, the cutout. The wide part goes on the left. Or stage left, because it's the right. I don't know. You know what I mean. The adhesive is not explicitly required. However, without the adhesive, your console will likely leak dust in over time. And you'll get dust between the uh, lens and the screen. Of course, that's probably going to happen no matter what because it's real difficult to get a perfect seal. But you can usually come pretty close and then pop the adhesive out. I like saving this because it's good 3M adhesive. You can use it for whatever the hell you want. Uh, but you don't have to. Anyway, that is looking good. There is a small. Uh, I don't know what that is, like a chip or a defect or something in the corner of the screen. Um, oh, here's a good idea. I have no idea if this works. 
It should. It did when I put it away. So let's test it before sticking it down. That is always a good idea. And I think it is especially relevant for this. So we'll just jam that bad boy in there. Let's go ahead and pop the buttons in. Oh, actually, I'm going to slide in the regular buttons. And they are a little shy, but they'll work. And this is just a dry one. Dry, dry one. We, are ju we are just testing the LCD, so I don't need to go full install. Trying my best not to touch that screen because I should have put the glass on first and I didn't. I'm going to use the clear back because it already has battery terminal. Doesn't have battery terminals in it. Never mind. I'm trying to save a step for not. And like usual, I forgot the power button. So, switch it on. Good thing I tested it because I got a fat lot of nothing. All right, give me a few minutes. I'm gonna go troubleshoot this. Um, Hopefully it's just the LCD because I've got a whole box full of those, but I'll be back. Ta-da! It was the screen. So, pop that out of there. Don't need that piece of junk. And let's pull this out. I'm going to do something I don't usually do. I usually do this in the other order, but we're going to try it. I think it is for the best. I'm going to install the lens first. Sometimes the center doesn't come out and I feel like this is going to be one of the ones that gives me that trouble. And yes, I am fully aware that my Game Boy Color is in black and white. That is the backlight kit. And because I don't have the touch sensors connected, it's going to be uh, not trivial to fix that. Again, I like to save these, but since that peeled off, I'm not saving that. But we can pull that off. Just do a world's tiniest violin with the lens between your fingers. So it is slightly tight. I suspect that is because of the paint. Not a bad thing. Just caught me off guard is all. Beautiful. Now would be when you hit it with your uh, compressed air. Which I think I need to do. Uh, so I shall do that in just a moment. Oh, actually, before I do that, let us... Oh, okay. That's convenient. Let's make sure it lines up properly, yeah? Oh, 
All right, so it is ever so slightly off, but that is, well, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if that's the shell or the kit or the lens even, but it is more than good enough because it's not cut off. It's just not centered. It's slightly over and up to the left. Um, but again, that could be the kit. I, again, I, I told you I got these mixed up because they're identical in every meaningful way. So one quick note, there is some up and down movement. We want to make it as far down as it goes. So it's going to be hitting this D-pad cutout. Pop that out. All right, I'm going to peel, I'm going to try and peel the adhesive. They have these weird cutouts at the corners that makes it kind of difficult to get the edge of the adhesive. Because it doesn't stick down. There we go. So you can see, you do that in all the corners. I'm not 100% sure the reasoning for that, but I'm sure it's not just because. There we go. Good enough for the girls I go out with. And so you're, you're probably sitting there thinking, Oh, but Marco, that didn't take you too long to do it the right way. Well, yes, it, it didn't, but I also know I'm probably not taking this thing apart because this shell just looks so gorgeous. And you also didn't see the 20 minutes I had the video filmed while I was cleaning and then looking for another screen. And then we should install one or both of the sensors so that we can test it through the shell. Uh, and we can do that. That's inconvenient. I have one from a thing. I'm pretty sure that is the touch palette sensor, which is normally not the one I would install, but I'm also pretty sure that this thing is not um, set to the proper palette, so screw it. need to swap it out at some point. Position doesn't matter too greatly because it's not a transparent shell, so... Alright, cool, cool, cool. Send it. Send it. I like that the D-pad also has that notch cut in it already. That is a very nice touch. Proud of you, Extreme Rate. Let's see, is the IR going to fit? Oh, it's beautifully. Oh. Alright, 
let us see what we got here. Very odd assortment of screws, but all right. So I'm guessing we have five little ones, five little but not as little ones. Uh, okay, you can you can tell by looking at the heads the difference between the not so little and the little ones. And then how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight long ones. Um, so we're gonna have extra screws, but that's okay. I believe the not so little little ones go into the motherboard here. in the screen. I have done that before. Always, always feels shitty. Put that in there. Then we need the rear housing, which I put somewhere, as usual. And we need to install the shielding. It's not hyper important, but might as well do it while it's open, you know. Also cut corners and just do literally the corners, two of them, but we're going to have extra screws, what the hell. Might as well use as many as we can. And then for some reason after all that they still went with the uh, weird tri-point. But that's okay, I'll forgive them. No, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just fucking around. This is not the right bit for these. I am going to strip that. That feels much better. So these are Y0 as well. So J0 for the little crosshead screws and then J1 for the big crosshead screws, and then Y0 for the big, big tripoint screws.
And again, you know, you want to cut corners, you can just literally do like two or three screws, but I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna judge the whole product, I need to, I need to do it properly, you know? That's in there, that's in there. And we only have a few extra parts. Link port cover for the link port that probably never use, but I still like to have it, even if I'm never going to use it. Oh, I got it too low. Oh well. You know what? Buttons feel great. Ooh, especially s select. Oof, yeah. I like that. This, this is a nice touch. A and B feel a little on the spongy side. But I don't know if that's something that needs to break in or if that's just how life is. But D pad feels fine. Start and select feel fine too. Alright. There you go. The extreme rate. PRJ Revivtro. Their new IPS ready Game Boy Color shell. Um, this comes in a few different finishes. Uh, oh, you know what? Hang on, I gotta mention that. The power switch feels excellent. That is not something you can take for granted. A lot of aftermarket Game Boy Color shells, the power switch just feels like garbage. This, easy peasy. That's great. The uh, IR window, the fit, it's a little sunken in, but I'm pretty sure it's like that on OEM anyway. Just realized I can actually, oh, this is aftermarket. Oh, but it has an OEM IR window. Yeah, it's sunken in on that too. And it's no improvement from the previous, but I think that is like stock. Touch sensors work just fine through this finish. Um, I don't think, I don't remember if they worked through this. I don't think they did. I'll try it again later on the, on the uh, Game Boy Advance shell, but works fine through this. Uh, that's all I got. I'm really digging this. I'm very, I'm very pleased with this. Um, if I had to find something to complain about, I kind of don't like this link port cover. It's a neat gimmick, but I don't like how it sticks out. But you can also just not use the link port cover. Um, I like that the finish matches, but the um, the look of it doesn't. Like it's it's just this this flat slab of plastic sla slapped onto the side of this curvy, you know. Look at all these curves. There's not a it's not a straight line on this bad boy except for the division between the faceplate and the rest of it. Mm. And then there's this. It doesn't match, but problem solved.
you know. I'm going to keep it. I, st I still like it. I'm just saying, if I had to find something to complain about. Otherwise, I am very pleased. Oh, you know what? Let us test. I'm sorry. Let's test one more thing. I think this is an important test. I got to find my Easy Flash. I found it. It was in my other Game Boy. It's in this bad boy. See, this one. This is very difficult to flip on. This is great. Uh, what do we want? DMG test program dot GB. I think that's it. I just want to test and see if I can hit more than two directions at a time. And I can't. So that is... Excellent. Test pass. So yeah, this thing is... This thing is actually really sweet. I am very pleased with this. Uh, I am actually kind of looking forward to what they... To what they come out with next. I might pick up another one of these and just carve it out to do a Q5 install because there's nothing wrong with this backlight kit. I just I just like the other one better, you know? That's that's all there is to it. This is this is phenomenal. Oh, I guess Okay, there you go. If I had to find something to complain about, it's that it's not compatible with the newest backlight kit. That's it. This is this is an excellent Excellent shell. I am very pleased with this. This is heaps better than the other garbage that we've had for Game Boy Color for years. This is great. Anyway, there will be links down in the description uh, if you want to check this stuff out. Uh, I do want to give Extreme Rate a um, big thank you for sending this my way to check out. Uh, I am very pleased with this. It is a night and day difference compared to the old shell and not just because it's IPS ready. It's just there. there's so many things there are so many little details that I don't want to say they got wrong with this one but that just I don't know. Once you add it all up it just kind of ruins the experience. Whereas this one you know there's yeah, you'll look for flaws, you'll probably find them, but everything else is just so good. Even even the little things like the speaker grill. Look at how perfect and uniform that is. All of the holes that are supposed to be through holes are through holes. Whereas if we take a look at this one, you can see there's some flashing on a few of them. Because I never cleaned this one out. Like if you look right there, you can see that hole, pretty wimpy, that hole, pretty wimpy, that hole so on um just little details like that they nailed on this one i am very pleased with this um i'm sorry i'm ranting and raving at this point but i think i think you get the idea i like this thanks for watching guys have a fantastic night